everyone, Kuro the Artist here, and welcome back to another Ben 10 Breakdown. In Season 1, Episode 7, Max Out, the trio discover that all DN aliens are actually humans. They were unfortunately genetically possessed by xenocytes that turned them into DN aliens against their will. They are completely at the mercy of the hybrid's command, and thus cannot be held responsible for their actions. In the very same episode, they also discover Ben's ability to use the Omnitrix and cure the DN aliens. He does this to save Gwen's brother, Ken Tennyson. From this point forward, this changes the trio's entire perspective on the aliens they've been fighting. And yet... <laughs> And I specifically only used clips from after they find out the DNA aliens are humans and Ben can cure them. Now, I get it. It's not like the DNA aliens are gonna listen to reason, and fighting them off is the only option they have a lot of the times. But it's baffling to me that they have this realization in Max Out, and then it isn't brought up again until a whole season and a half later. You'd think they would have at least tried to cure them for now on, or at least keep the violence to a minimum. Especially when we know that the DNA aliens are still conscious. I couldn't stop. It was like I was watching someone else. You've been fighting the reprogramming the whole time. Which means they're all fighting back. It's like when Ben said to Simeon. That guard. He was just doing his job. He didn't want to hurt anybody. But you were going to kill him. So this isn't any different, right? So watching the trio mercilessly beat the shit out of the DNA aliens every episode, even when they know what's really happening, uh, it could be tough to watch it sometimes. And other times, hilarious. Now, I know there's a reason why they don't do this, which is brought up in the finale, because it would waste the energy of Ben's Omnitrix. What would you do? Cure them? That's not a bad idea. Energy reserves depleted. We're wasting power in a pointless exercise. But again, that's the finale. Before that, we have a whole season and a half of the merciless clutch of Ben Tennyson. Never once showing sympathy, never looking for another way aside from fighting, and they barely seem to be holding back if at all. In fact, in the clip I just played, you can see that curing them never even crossed Ben's mind until the finale. What would you do? Cure them? That's not a bad idea. Despite learning that he can do this 18 episodes prior, and Alien Force is actually a pretty story-heavy series. I'm just saying, when they go out of their way to make Ben look morally righteous. These are human beings, Michael. We take them down, not out. Understand? It's crazy that the only thing he's ever tried is throwing hands even after learning there's another way. I would have rather him try and fail to cure the DNA aliens on a massive scale until Cooper figures it out, rather than never bring up this feature at all. In fact, as I've said before, it would have made a great episode to have the trio try to find a way to beat the DNA aliens without, you know, literally beating them. They can try a bunch of things and fail and ultimately have to accept that this is the situation they're stuck in, which would motivate them even further to try to put an end to the high invasion as quickly as possible. But anyway, if this is your first breakdown and you're curious about how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below, along with a link to all of my previous breakdowns, but by all means, watch this video first, I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. Gonna plug the 5YL 5th anniversary stream one last time before it happens on this Monday, April 4th at 5.30pm EST. We also have a fan art contest that's been going on for a bit. You have until midnight tonight when this video drops on Friday in order to get your submission in. If you want more info, check out our Twitter. Twitter at it's the ink tank and now let's take a look at the poll as you may have guessed there's nothing that can be classic dr. animo but the comments on this poll and video are filled with people either passionately defending or criticizing devoid and it's fun to see people state their case and I'm glad that these breakdowns always generate discussion Matt Wayne gave us inside man which first aired December 12th 2008 we follow Tyler a 26 year old man who has escaped the DNA aliens and is soon rescued by the trio it is later revealed that Tyler is a DNA alien himself that somehow broke free from their control and stole a special key in hopes to ruin their plans to build a hyperspace jump gate. Another truck and alien force. We all know how that goes. There's a surprising amount of establishing shots of this truck going crazy. It lasts a little bit longer than you would expect. I'll really complain in just noticing the slower pace of this episode. A lot of really good vehicle animation too, despite not using CG models. 
This guy is me when I've been drawing for two days straight. So it looks like he's getting a lot of flashbacks to things he's experienced as a DNA alien, but we're not supposed to know that yet as viewers. Loading something into the back of the very truck he's driving right now. Maybe that's why they spent so many establishing shots on the truck so you can recognize what it looks like. This is a neat little device, kind of like a almost like a grill, and these little blue legs shrink back into their chamber in order to lower the vertical height of this device. Pretty good shadows overlapping the shape of this. Right here we see the arch that was starting to be built in undercover, which was previously not fully built. In fact, a lot of the metal plating wasn't there, exposing the quartz crystal underneath it. This is a very dramatic shot. I like how well it's animated too. And the clouds fade in, and this is a very nice shot as well. I think these clouds are actually like CG simulations rather than the usual paintings that would just be shifted from left to right. We got a xenocyte floating in a chamber. I don't actually think we've seen these chambers before. We've seen them in buckets, and we've seen them in their marination tanks, as well as transportation carts, but all three, none of these little tubes yet. <laughs> This looks like the augmented hybrid that Ben fought and grounded. You can tell because he's got this little V towards his neck where regular hybrid don't have that. And there's Tyler. So he made his escape not too long before the episode started. So here we are again. A lot of very good dramatic buildup in this episode. All just by shot choices. No dialogue so far. I like that you can see the skin marks drawn into the ground and two different colors of smoke the dust collecting from the sand impact and the gray smoke from supposedly the engine or at least some part of the truck and he's fine name's jeff i think we've seen this guy before is this also the guy from undercover that was talking to the cop a uh, similar face shape but no maybe max out yeah he looks very similar to that guy different eye colors though plus they were voiced by different people uh, Tyler. The aliens did something to my mind. Tyler right here is voiced by Wallace Langham. He's got a pretty good resume, but I haven't seen a lot of his projects. Seems to be a guest character in a lot of media, as he is right here in Ben 10. <laughs> just leaves him there. Poor guy. I feel like nowadays people are more accepting of the possibility that aliens exist, or at least would want to hear everything this guy has to say out of curiosity. Back in the day, people were very spooked by anything weird. How is it that even in an open area with lights coming down upon this terrain, are they still trying to black out the backgrounds to oblivion? Very slow pace so far, and we haven't even seen the main trio at all. Yet, my interest has not been lost. I think it's simply because we're constantly waiting to see how all of this ties into the main story. Or is it like, if you didn't know Ben 10 and you were starting with this episode, I don't think it would hook you as much. You have to believe me! Ugh. Oh wow, have we seen multiple hybrid in the same room yet? I know we've seen different hybrid throughout the series so far, but all occupying the same space? It's quite the sight. Good news, has a special alien-proof room. No! This is real! I mean, even if this guy was going crazy and they wanted to, like, give him some psychic evaluations, you have to think these thoughts might have stemmed from somewhere. And this guy trying to get rid of Tyler so quickly shows he's a DNA alien. See, look at these guys smirk as they're taking him away. He's here. Details. That's a pretty comfy looking bed for a prison cell. My name is Tyler. I'm 26 years old. So this guy is 10 years older than Kevin and 11 than Gwen and Ben. Yet when he's next to them, he more or less looks their age. Then again, I'll be 26 next month and when I shave, I look pretty young. Some of us are cursed with that baby face. Wake up. I just need your statement. Where'd you hide the key? So their key must have been whatever they're transporting in the back of that truck. This man's got some Bugs Bunny physics pulling out that huge gun out of a pocket only this size. Make it easy on yourself, boy. Wow, these DNA aliens are really good at acting like cops. Max the ID mask off of him. We got like the surrounding effect. There was one other episode that had this effect for the mask as opposed to the electrical aura effect that the mask usually has. You're one of them! Don't have to harm you! Oh, and this one didn't have either. Aside from a little lightning on his hand, he just flickers into the DNA alien like static. <laughs> So I get that he can do this because he's actually a DNA alien too, and thus has their super strength, but how did he know he can do this? If I thought I was a human and got attacked by aliens, my first instinct wouldn't be pick up a bunk bed and crush them against the wall with it. That was a very gently animated spitfire. So this episode waits a good six minutes to introduce the trio, which isn't that long, but comparatively to their 22 minute runtime, that's about a good third of the episode. Who are you? Oh wow, the front of Kevin's car is painted. We're here to help. Ow! DNA aliens came out of the police station. You must have had ID masks and scanned them for communications that mention any kind of tech above level two. Your name came up, Tyler. You know, the trio seems so professional and badass in the perspective of an ordinary person without seeing all their deeper relationships.
relationships and hijinks. It's like, wow, these kids really know what's up. Said you've got an oscillator key, whatever that is. Well, an oscillator monitors the changes between energy in the device. And we already know of two of the energy sources that the hybrid use, the quartz crystal and the radioactive guano. So perhaps the oscillator is meant to fluctuate between the two forms of energy to power their jump gate. Something messed up my memory. What's that? It's a pick. A bass pick, to be exact. Is there a difference between a guitar pick and a bass pick? Alright, the biggest difference between the two is apparently the thickness, so the fact that Ben was able to eye the thickness of the pick and determine if it was a guitar or bass one is a very specific thing that we're gonna have to buy. We've only seen Ben actually play guitar once, and that was in Monster Weather, and it's pretty clear he was just improvising and screwing around. But who knows, maybe he gave it a serious try within the five years. Lights off! Do it! Yeah, come on, Kevin, we can actually see what's going on. <laughs> Wait, his gear shift changes his lights? Alright. A lot of really good moving backgrounds in this episode, by the way. They've done this shot, but from so many different angles, and it has yet to actually look half-assed. The amount of times they've had to build shots like this, it's surprising how well they all look. You know, if you actually think about it, this would be a very creepy thing to see if you were driving around in the desert. These kids are fearless. A hyperdimensional oscillator key is about as big as it gets. Hyperdimensional? So if they know the key is hyperdimensional, and Tiny's father previously said, Can't imagine what anyone would need this much crystal quartz for. Maybe a teleporter grid? I'm pretty sure they know by now they're building a jump gate. Or at least they should. It's for warping space. There you go, Kevin. Now, now it's all coming together. I had to steal it away. They may need it, but they don't know where it is. I do. Some more solid shadow animations. What are you people? Oh right, Tyler's not used to this either. But at least he's not entirely freaked out by them. This so you know my headcanon I made last breakdown about how Chromastone's lasers are green until he absorbs something? Well, this episode just destroyed that, so there goes that theory. Although his lasers do look pretty cool in this episode as well. I like how they build at his center, then shift to his fist, and you get some warp effects when you see through the light. <laughs> Oh, pure white light. That's not even a laser, that's just light. It's cool how he can do that. But a Dean alien was already here. Did he stow away, or did they coincidentally find the key at the same time they did? Oh, man! There's Ben's other catchphrase. <laughs> What are you doing, Ben? Just shoot him. Against Albedo, you were able to generate your light beams throughout your entire body and burn through Spider Monkey's rope. Just do that. <laughs> That's cool. We don't actually see the DNA aliens use their tendrils as appendages too much. Usually they just dangle out of their mouth. Come to think of it, have we seen one open up its entire body ever since the pilot? Or is it just that one time? Gwen's magic looks a little funky over here. Watch this. It, like freezes on certain frames. Granted, it's in the background, so who really gives a shit? See, that looked fine. You're coming with us. You know something? It's strange that the DNA aliens don't always try to possess Ben, Gwen, and Kevin. That would have been plan A if I was a hybrid. Jump gate. The hybrid fleet quickly as any other. Alright, so I understand that when in shots like this, they're just gonna put some random shit on the screen to make it look like they're looking at something. But when you choose to focus on the screen and only the screen, it's like, are we supposed to know what this is? Okay, all right, if you look at the red arch right here, it does fade into the arch, so you can tell they're looking at the plans to build the jump gate. It's even got these little red dangling things to represent the building construction. But this circle and this circle obscure the arch too much for you to make that connection. At least for me, I would have either made the circles transparent or much smaller. Maybe it was the point to obscure it, I don't know. But either way, now that I can see what they were trying to do, I, I guess that's pretty cool. Oh, and that's where the key goes, right at the top. <laughs> nice try, though. The DNA aliens seem mad stronger in this episode. They're ripping open Kevin's skin, bursting through the truck like bullets, giving the team a run for their money. Are the DNA aliens juiced up in this episode? Did they perfect the Xenocyte DNA or whatever? <laughs> Good job, Chromastone. You're it, guy. There are countless others. Don't let him get away. He's gonna go bring the others. <laughs> She's just letting this happen. Remember the Forever Nights? You wanna wrap this up? They're all just letting this happen. This is nuts. Let him go. Right. Right? I mean, if anything, tie him up and then cure him with your Omnitrix, Ben. Look at how much time you had with all of them knocked down onto the ground. It's just, that's crazy. Building 
building a dimensional gateway in Los Soledad. The whole hybrid fleet's gonna invade and destroy the Earth. I remember. So now they know their means. They just gotta figure out the motive. But that's dope. It really does feel like uh, all the seeds were properly planted in the first two seasons. And I think I know why you remember. When Ben takes off the mask of this guy, you see his skeleton flicker into frame. That's cool and all, but this never happened for any of the other ID masks being taken off. <laughs> You're a DNA alien. Now that was a crazy twist when I first saw this, not gonna lie. It makes enough sense for you to buy it, but it wasn't too heavily foreshadowed for you to predict it. So Tyler was a human, transformed into a DNA alien, wearing a mask to make him look like his human self. No way a regular guy could go through a wreck like that without being hurt. I mean, humans have been relatively indestructible in Ben 10 so far, so I don't know what you're talking about, Ben. I'm a regular guy. They all are at first. And the trio are fully aware of it, and yet kick the shit out of DNA aliens every single episode. They don't even try to help them. These xenocyte things. Slap one on your face. Suddenly you're not you anymore. We lost our grandpa Max. I nearly lost my brother. Hold on. We lost our grandpa Max. So in production order, this does take place after Voided, which is where we found out Grandpa Max is already alive. Check out what I found. Hi, pumpkin. Grandpa. Oh man, you know what? I was just about to say, maybe they knew the airing order was going to change up the episode's release. But even in airing order, Inside Man came after Voided. So no matter how you watch this, Gwen's acting like Grandpa Max is still dead, even though both versions of the timeline, she should know that Max is alive. And she does think he's dead because she does say she almost lost her brother, which is different than losing Grandpa Max. We lost our Grandpa Max and nearly lost my brother. So maybe when scripting this episode, it took place before Voided, but then it was produced and then aired afterwards for whatever reason. But still, in the greater context, I do think Inside Man makes the perfect penultimate episode to the season. I think Inside Man leading up to War of the Worlds is much better than Voided leading up to War of the Worlds, had it gone that way. We were there a few weeks ago. We thought we destroyed whatever they were building. Somehow you got the big key away. Know your mission. Oh, Soledad. All the episodes are coming together here. That's really cool. It makes watching the entire season instead of skipping through it pay off pretty well. I was supposed to take it. I'm one of them. You've been fighting the reprogramming the whole time. Which means they're all fighting back. But y'all figured this out during Max Out. You literally witnessed Ken fight against the DNA alien code and then Ben cured him. It is Ken. What this did to me. It's that thing on him. It's making him do this. Should we attempt to repair? like I was watching someone else. And then you proceed to drop an entire ceiling of rocks upon them later on. It's like, this is why I feel like this season was really missing an episode where they tried to cure all the DNA aliens, but were back to a corner in their failures and realized they have to fight them. Also would have made the revelation that Cooper can make the DNA alien repair guns in the finale a lot more impactful. Where Ben's like, oh, I've tried to cure them, but the Omnitrix can't handle it or whatever. And then Cooper's like, I can replicate that technology. You know, hindsight is 2020. But when the whole premise of your main villains as they're possessed humans and sometimes the trio acts sympathetic to them but other times they don't that creates a lot of inconsistency in their moral complex we need to get the oscillator key out of here Wipe this planet clean as quickly as any other so that phrase implies that the hybrid have done this before to many other planets so i guess in war of the worlds earth is just like ground zero for their massive takeover they probably did a few test runs on a few lesser planets just to make sure they could do it <laughs> Look at them working together. And a tuning fork the size of a building won't? A uh, humongous voice filter is back yet again. I guess they're not truly done with it yet. There has been a handful of episodes where they don't do it already. Now what is this ship? I haven't seen this one before. It acts very similarly to their transport ship, except uses a blue beam instead of a red and is much rounder, while their transport ships are much taller and longer. Get for cover! Humongousaur doesn't even look that much bigger. If he could just do that, then why'd they even waste time doing the dragon it with Gwen's mana thing? Oh, it's a lot of them. Loving the way the ground was animated in this. Lots of moving backgrounds in this episode, and they all look great. <laughs> I'm finished either way. No sacrifices. Oh boy, here I go killing again. Alright, this this is starting to get pretty epic. Look at that thing. How do I shut off the tractor beam? Okay, so the beam that Gwen's deflecting is a tractor beam, which is probably why it's blue and not red. Which is surprising that Gwen's man is able to resist the force of the tractor beam. But, you know, alien magic. <laughs> Going to you. You won't ever us. Oh man, they're gonna try to brainwash him again. His mind is gonna be fried. Damn, Gwen's doing all of this in heels too. Mad props. 
when they cut to Tyler, they're actually frozen in place for a few frames before they finally start going up. See that? Oh snap, there goes the key. It's cool that it starts being encompassed by the tractor beam's aura. Yeah, there's like a little force between being inside and outside of the tractor beam. Very good stuff. You can actually compare the night and day colors like this. See, look how dark Gwen's hair looks like in the night versus her day colors. Although right here, she's completely in her night colors, just to make the transition of her falling down more easy. Tyler, shoot the mirror! Oh, Ben, what a tough choice. I suppose he could have shot the mirror and then caught Tyler. I don't know. I guess he's just thinking on impulse right now. What's wrong with you? Really not sure about your choice, Ben. Yeah, at least the other characters are calling him out in the episode as well. No sacrifice. No save the world. We lose twice. That's what you don't get. So throughout this whole sequence, we get a shot of Ben's DNA or from an angle I don't believe we've seen before. You can tell it was done with the typical red background that was tinted green because there's still some remnants of the red in there. Then we get a quick shot of Ben's skull. This is either used from the goop or the jet ray transformation. shot of the Xenocyte leaping forward. This is from Max Out. You can actually see they tried to mask out the plate from that shot and just cover it with green. I guess they didn't have access to the actual animation frame without the background. And Ben just does this in confidence too. He's like, yeah, I know I can do this. This is really me. I, I can remember it all. It's never hopeless and we know who's gonna stop. Ending on a very similar shot from Max Out. The three characters stand heroically with someone who is just along for the journey as we pan up to the sky. Yeah, this episode seems like the perfect lead up to War of the Worlds. Minus that one continuity mistake of Gwen still thinking Max is dead. So now the war is about to begin. I'm gonna start off by giving the plot of this a five. Might seem a little surprising, but I really think this episode was very well executed. I like that we started off from Tyler's perspective and started rebuilding the whole mystery of Alien Force from his POV. We're so used to the trio fighting the hybrid and Dean aliens by now that it's starting to feel less threatening. So this is a nice refreshing reminder that yes, they are actually nothing to scoff at. And when you're not within the main trio's perspective, they're actually pretty horrifying and what they're going to do can potentially change the world. I think the twist that Tyler was a DNA alien was done great. This managed to expand on the DNA alien hybrid lore while also giving us a subtle recap on the events prior. I just think this episode did exactly what it needed to do to set up the finale while also telling a pretty great story in of itself. Again, it's not crazy or like grandiose, but I think using its premise and the way that it was handled was done extremely well and I think a five is well deserved for this while we finally figured out that what they were building was a jump gate as confirmed by Tyler we still don't quite know their motivations for doing so yet but with everything laid out the way it was it, it does feel like this was all properly established and wasn't coming out of nowhere and this episode acts as a very strong link in the chain of the hybrid plotline characterization I'm going to give it a five as well the writers are very comfortable with the trio's personalities and this seemed very consistent with their core characters and Tyler, despite being a new character, was very interesting in this episode. I like that he had to refigure out his entire identity by looking through his wallet while having the duality of the flashbacks of his times as a DNA alien. I can't see a role for him in a future episode, but it would have been nice to see him come back in some fashion or so. Maybe somewhere in season three they run by Tyler and he just thanks them for saving him or whatever, you know, give him some type of closure. Or as a twist, perhaps they'd want to keep him as a DNA alien so that not only does he have combative powers, but he could perhaps infiltrate the Dean aliens and weave some type of plot line with that in the finale. It, it's ultimately unnecessary, but I'm just saying I feel like Tyler was a very well-written character in this episode, and there was enough built upon it where if he appeared again, I feel like audiences would enjoy it. Visuals, it's going to get a 4. A lot of great animation in here, good fight choreography, and despite being a slower paced episode, the pacing and the shot choices kept your interest. And while we are starting to get a little bit tired of the typical Dean alien fights, they were able to switch it up in this one by giving them different V vehicles, the fact that they had to take out the tractor beam. See, this is the type of diversity I would have liked to see more throughout the season, rather than the DNA alien fights just feeling like filler action pieces. Although despite all of that, nothing quite worth a 5 in this category, but it's as good as it can be for this premise. Importance, unfortunately, it can only get a 2. This episode feels like it's more important than it really is, but ultimately you don't need it to understand War of the Worlds. But it has at least more than a 1, because I feel like it carries more weight than the other episodes that 
might just put a little piece of the puzzle into the hybrid war. This one lays down a couple of pieces. It also gives us a nice perspective on what it's like for someone to be overtaken by a DNA alien and dealing with the repercussions of their actions when possessed by the hybrid. So it doesn't add a lot to the overall story, and there's nothing new introduced in this episode that you really need to know to get to War of the Worlds, but it does a great job fleshing out the hybrid war from a different perspective, and it does indeed confirm that they're building a jump gate. And entertaining, I'll give it a four. The intrigue of Tyler's dilemma is enough to carry you through the episode, and then once the twist is revealed, we're met with a pretty great action set piece. But because we've done DNA alien rescues time and time again, despite this being a unique take on it, it's ultimately not the most exciting thing, so I can only give it a four, leaving this episode off with a 20 out of 25. It's one of the stronger ones of season two, and it is a great addition to the library of the hybrid episodes, so I think this is a pretty solid score for its own. So I really like how this episode tied into a lot of the season two's mini plot points. Basically everything that I gave a one to because it has something to do with the hybrid, but not entirely important. All of those plot points build up towards this episode, but it's all just finer details in their plans. Anything rated three or higher in this season is all you really need to see, but it's nice to see the details pop up and accumulate somewhere. I also noticed while editing, in the beginning of this episode, we're misled by seeing Tyler sneak into the truck and then burst out of the garage as if he's stealing it away from the DNA aliens. When we later find out that Tyler's mission was to drive the truck to Los Soledad and had full permission to be in the truck to begin with. You know your mission? Los Soledad. No stops. I was supposed to take it. Maybe he snuck away so the DNA aliens wouldn't notice that he broke free of their control, but it doesn't seem like they noticed when they were talking directly to him. So perhaps if he didn't try to make such a dramatic escape, he could have driven away much further. Also, when Tyler is searching through his wallet and looking at his belongings, he was a DNA alien at the time, so we're assuming that the ID mask replicated all of Tyler's belongings as well as his appearance, which is not impossible. We'll later see an ID mask replicate objects as well, but I'm just fascinated by the incredible detail that this technology can create. Let's wrap things up with this week's poll. This is going to be a slightly different one. So we've seen a lot of appearances from the aliens you would expect, Swampfire, Humongousaur, Jet Ray, and all of them. But of the aliens who appeared the least, which one would you have liked to see more of this season? Goop only had four episodes, Brainstorm only had three, Spider Monkey only had two, and Alien X had zero. So out of those ones, if you wish they appeared more in season two, let me know in the community tab when this video goes live. I hope Hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and as always, keep it fizzy.